Hey everybody, it's Peter from the Hit Chasers. I'm back with another Mix It tutorial. Today I'm going to be talking about creating a bus channel. It may be called an AUGS in your DAW. Depending on what you're using, it might be called an AUGS or a bus. In this case, it's going to be called a bus. I'm using Sonar X1 for this tutorial. Okay, so in this example here, I've put together something really simple. I've got a drum track that I've split into eight separate channels, and then I have two guitar tracks that I recorded separately. They're both playing the same thing, but I have panned them one hard right, and I have panned the other hard left, so we get a nice stereo image. So let's just take a listen to what we've got here. Alright, so that's pretty cool. Um, I mixed everything individually so that it's all sounding fairly even at this point. But what we want to do is we want to create a bus track for our drums and we want to create a bus track for our guitars. Why do we want to do that? Well, let me tell you. You want to create a bus track so that you can take a bunch of individual tracks and then sum them down into one track so you can treat them as one track. So you may want to affect the kick and the snare and the tom separately and individually as tracks, but after you're done doing that, you're going to want to bring them all together so that you're affecting the whole drum kit as one thing. Okay, and that's where a bus comes in. So let's get right into it, okay? I'm going to start with the drums and I've got eight tracks up here and down here I have no buses right now I'm gonna right click right here and I'm gonna insert a stereo bus I'm gonna go ahead and name that stereo bus drums and then I'm gonna go ahead and start playing again and let's see what happens <laughs> so you can see up here we're getting signal but down here, we're not getting any signal. That's because we haven't routed it. We need to route this kick drum, along with the rest of the channels for the drums, down to this bus. Now the way we do that is, we come up here into the kick channel, and we look at the output, and we're gonna select drums, which is now available in the outputs for the channel. Once you create the bus, it then becomes available to bus your individual channels to, or send your individual channels to. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and select kick. Now what you're gonna see is that we're gonna see a signal down there. There it is. Now if I just solo this track, you're gonna see it's just the kick. The only thing that I've sent there so far is the kick, okay? Now I'm gonna go ahead and send the snare there by doing the same thing. I'm gonna select drums from the output. I'm gonna keep this solo down here and we should hear just the kick drum and the snare. And there it is. So now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna bust the rest of the drum kit down there. Each of the channels, I'm gonna send each of them to drums. That to drums. All right, I have all eight channels now going to drums. So when I press play here and I have the drum bus soloed, I should hear the entire kit. And there it is. Okay, so why is this important? I said it before. It's important because although you may want to affect the kick all by itself by adding some equalization or adding some compression to it and the same with the hi-hat snare or any other of these elements once you're done doing that it's a good idea to send them all to a bus track or an aux track so then you can affect the whole kit at once so you can add compression across the whole kit 
you can add equalization across the whole kit, you're affecting the whole entire thing. So let me give you an example. I'm gonna go up here and just grab a reverb real quick. And I'm gonna throw that on the whole kit. Now we've uh, sent reverb across the whole kit. As opposed to maybe I just wanted reverb on the snare. I would just go ahead and throw that up there on the snare track then. Now you're gonna hear that the snare should be affected but not the rest of the kit. Let me exaggerate that a little bit. If I mute that, you'll hear the rest of the kit is not affected, just the snare. So as I said, you may want to affect the individual tracks, but then if you sum them all down into a bus, you can affect the whole thing. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and take that off of there. I'm gonna close these up. And now we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing with our guitars. So let's take a listen to the two guitar tracks. Here they are together. All right, so I said I got one off to the left, I got one off to the right, and they sound pretty good, just the way they are. The advantage of creating a bus, which I'm gonna do right here, is that you can send them both to one track, and in essence, you're treating the two guitars like one guitar. So let me go ahead and send these. I'm gonna name this bus first, I'm gonna name it guitar. Now, that bus will be available on each of these. Now, drums is available too, but we don't want to send it to the, to the drum bus. We want to send this to its own bus, the guitar bus. Guitars, guitars. Okay, and I'm going to unsolo these. I'm going to play everything. Now, if I go down here to my guitar bus and I solo, just here in the guitars, okay? Both left and right. Now I can still affect what's going on down here in the bus by affecting the individual tracks up here. So if I raise the volume in one, you're gonna hear that, okay? But I'm dealing with both of these tracks at the same time. So let me go ahead and grab some compression here and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab a SSL compressor and throw that on the guitar bus. Now. Now, as you can see, it's very real useful to be able to have both of those guitars together and compress them together so now they sound real tight and together, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and bring the drums in. All right, I'm liking the way that's sounding, but I'm starting to feel like the drums and the guitars are now sounding like they're not together, okay? Because we've created these buses and now the guitars are real tight and the drums are real tight, but they don't quite sound like they're together. So what you can do, add another bus. So I'm gonna insert a stereo bus right here. I'm gonna call this one All Tracks. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna send my two buses, drums and guitar, to all tracks. So now everything's going to all tracks. I'm gonna go ahead and throw a compressor across that whole thing. I'm gonna bypass that for right now. So here's what we had coming in. And now I'm gonna add compression across the whole thing. It glued the whole thing together. So you can see there's a lot of advantages to creating buses and using buses. Um, it helps you sum all of your tracks down into smaller amounts that you can work with. So if you just need to raise the level of the drums or raise the level of the guitars or lower the levels, you can do that. If you feel like things are not quite 
fitting together right, it helps push them all together by sending them to an individual track. That's pretty much what busing is. If you like the content of this video and you want to see more, please comment below and let us know. As always, like and subscribe and check out the rest of the content on the Hit Chasers channel. We are posting videos currently on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Hope to see you soon.